I fear not the dark itself, but what may lurk within it. Welcome to Lurk, bringing you creepy, strange, and bone-chilling stories with your host, Jamie Jackson. Lurkers, welcome to this week's episode. We have an African cryptid as our topic this week called Mokeli Mbembe. If you were a kid in the 1980s, you might be a little familiar with this creature thanks to a movie called Baby, Secret of the Lost Legend. I might have watched it as a kid. I also might have started naming all the creatures I encountered Baby. Who knows? Maybe I'm lying. So this cryptid resides in the Congo River Basin in Africa. The Congo River Basin is located in Central Africa in an area called West Equatorial Africa. It makes up one of the most important wilderness areas left on Earth, and with 500 million acres, it's larger than the state of Alaska. It's the second largest rainforest, second only to the Amazon. And the climate in the Congo River Basin is warm and humid, with only two seasons, a wet season that runs March to November, and a dry season that runs December to February. It's home to a wide variety of species. There are 10,000 plant species, along with animals such as lowland and mountain gorillas, forest elephants, chimpanzees, bonobos, pygmy hippos, and the okapi which was itself once considered a cryptid. In fact, the Okapi is the symbol of the International Society of Cryptozoology. The Okapi was rediscovered in 1901, but a live specimen wasn't captured until 1919. The Mokeli and Bembe's name translates to the one who stops the flow of rivers. It is sometimes described as a living creature and sometimes called a spirit. It's described as a large quadrupedal herbivore with smooth skin, long neck, small head, long muscular tail, and some descriptions include a long tooth or horn. Of course, this description is quite similar to a sauropod dinosaur, and by that I mean dinosaurs like the Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, and the Brachiosaurus. The first description of Mokeli and Bembe where it was likened to an Apatosaurus, was in 1909, in the book Beasts and Men, an autobiography of famed big game hunter Carl Hagenbeck. Hagenbeck heard two independent sources talk about a creature living not in the Congo, but in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. It was described by natives as half elephant and half dragon. Naturalist Joseph Mengus also talked to Hagenbeck about similar stories. Hagenbeck said, It can only be some kind of dinosaur, seemingly akin to the Brontosaurus. Another of Hagenbeck's sources said that while he was at Lake Bangweulu in Zambia, he noticed there was a lack of hippopotamuses. <laughs> hippopotamuses or hippopotami? I think the song says hippopotamuses, so we're going to go with that one. So, he notices that there's no hippos in the area. Native guides informed him that there was a large hippo-killing creature that lived in the lake. This creature was known as the Chippequi and rarely left the water of the lake. Eyewitness accounts said the creature would leave a steamer-sized wake as it moved through the lake. A Zambian local claimed to have seen a number of them along the swampy shoreline of the lake in 1928. There were many different sightings of similar smooth-skinned, large quadrupeds, and there are several different creatures, it seems. Because really, every time I set out to do a simple topic, it never ends up simple. We'll touch on those other creatures in a bit, but first we're going to be talking about the Mokele and Bembe. Now, in my research, I did learn that Mokele and Bembe can sometimes just 
mean several different creatures within that group. So the creature that I mentioned, the, the Chipic way, or however you say it, because I didn't look it up, could actually be classified as Mokele and Bembe. Mokele and Bembe is mostly seen in the Republic of Congo and Cameroon, where it is said to inhabit swampy or marshy wetlands, lakes, and rivers. It is known to most indigenous peoples of the western Congo Basin. One of the earliest reports of the creature appeared in the History de Luango, Kakongo et Autre Royalmus de Africa in 1776. I'm guessing that's probably French and I never spoke that language and I completely murdered it, but whatever. It has to do with the history of the areas of Africa in, in 1776, not 1776. According to this book, missionaries in West Africa had reported the existence of a very large animal on the basis of its tracks being discovered. A quote about the creature reads, The missionaries observed, passing along a forest, the trail of an animal which was not seen, but which must have been monstrous. The marks of the claws were noted on the ground, and these formed a print about three feet in circumference. The arrangement of the impressions indicated that the animal was walking and not running. The distance between the footprints measured seven to eight feet. Bernard Huevelmans was the first to quote this account in a, in a cryptozoological context, and he thought the creature could have been a water lion. A water lion, from my understanding and brief research, is basically something akin to a saber-toothed tiger that likes the water. We'll just keep it simple. Later, cryptozoologists have classified the report as a Mokele and Bembe, not a water lion. In 1913, German colonial officer Ludwig Freiherr von Stein zu Lauschnitz came out of retirement to lead an expedition to an area that is now part of the Northern Republic of Congo. Stein was forced to turn back on the Sango River due to the outbreak of World War I in 1914, and he never published his findings. He did send his unpublished data to a fellow German who was a writer and naturalist, who was then actually working on a study of dragons, where he argued that legends of dragons were inspired by historical survival of dinosaurs and other prehistoric reptiles. I actually tend to agree with him. Stein's descriptions of Mokele and Bembe came independently from guides in the regions of the lower Ubangi, Sanga, and Ikalemba rivers, all of whom gave consistent accounts. I should probably take a moment to tell you that I'm going to completely screw up all of the names in here. Um, I did not look them all up. There's a lot of them, so I'm just going to do my best, and I apologize for pronunciations. It is what it is. Stein referred to the creature as a very mysterious thing, which possibly does not exist except in the imagination of the natives. However, he did believe it was based on something more tangible. A quote from Stein's work reads, The creature is reported not to live in the smaller rivers. At the time of our expedition, a specimen was reported from the non-navigable part of the Sanga River, somewhere between the two rivers Mab Mabayo and Pukunda. Unfortunately, in a part of the river that could not be explored due to the brusque end of our expedition. We also heard about the alleged animal at the Sosombo River. The narratives of the natives result in a general description that runs as follows. The animal is said to be of brownish gray color with a smooth skin, its size approximately that of an elephant at least that of a hippopotamus. It is said to have a long and very flexible neck and only one tooth, but a very long one. Some say it's a horn. A few spoke about a long muscular tail like that of an alligator. Canoes coming near it are said to be doomed. The animal is said to attack the vessels at once 
and to kill the crews, but without eating the bodies. The creature is said to live in caves that have been washed out by the river in the clay of its shores at sharp bends. It is said to climb the shore, even at daytime, in search of food. Its diet is said to be entirely vegetable. This feature disagrees with a possible explanation as a myth. The preferred plant was shown to me. It is a kind of liana with large white blossoms with a milky sap and apple-like fruits. At the Sasambo River, I was shown a path said to have been made by this animal in order to get at its food. The path was fresh, and there were plants of the described type nearby. But since there were too many tracks of elephants, hippos, and other large mammals, it was impossible to make out a particular spore with any amount of certainty. Uh, just so you know, uh, liana is a viney plant that uses other things like trees for support. And spore is a word that refers to footprints or traces of animals. And that concludes our vocab test for the day. In Stein's personal diary, he made comment that two separate tribes in two separate areas described the same or similar creatures, both descriptions following those of the Mokeli and Bembe. In 1934, a Belgian explorer said the natives told him the creature exceeds the tallest trees, the body is like that of a formidable ox with a large tail. Its neck is immense and ends in a rather small head on which it has large crest like a coxcomb. It dwells in the swamps and swims at a very great speed. Another description from 1938 stated, The belief in a gigantic water animal described as a reptile with a long thin neck exists among the natives throughout the southern Cameroons, wherever they form part of the Congo Basin, and also to the west of this area. Doubtless, wherever the great rivers are broad and deep and are flanked by virgin forests, this belief seems to be widespread throughout the Congo Basin. The monster is herbivorous and mainly feeds on the luxuriant aquatic vegetation of this region. To do this, it does not come out of the water until after sunset. Its preferred habitat is in places where, as a result of the force of the current, deep and peaceful creeks have formed. These are the features common to all indigenous stories of this kind. In 1960, a French explorer discovered the Zaman people refused to take their canoes out onto the open water of the river out of fear of an unnamed monster. This creature was described as having a long neck, at least six feet long, a head like a big turtle, hard or scaly skin, and a body that was slightly smaller than an elephant. It was said to live in deep water, coming out only at night, and it left tracks the shape and size of a large paddle. It didn't eat people, but it had a habit of overturning canoes and drowning the occupants. A local chief described creatures he called water elephants that were not related to actual normal elephants. He said these animals were far larger than an actual elephant, with a long neck, with a small head, flat paddle-like forelimbs, and a long whip-like tail. It didn't kill men intentionally since it ate herbs and trees, but it would trample them to death. The chief said the head was like a monitor lizard. In 1980, there were expeditions, once again, attempting to find the elusive Mokele Mbembe, headed by biologist Roy Mackle. He soon established that locals in the area of the northern Congo were familiar with the creature. One informant gave a detailed description. It's an animal of the water. My father knew this animal and always spoke the truth. It has been seen in the Ubangi to the south and where there is a big bend in the river and a vortex. And there is another place where there are many rocks on this side of the Ubangi. I do not think anyone has seen it at these places just now, but in the Ipina district the wet, it, to the west, there are reports of this animal right now. You must speak to the pygmies. They travel in the jungle. 
they have lots of courage and go to places Africans would never dare to go. They know the truth about the Mokele and Bembe. The name Mokele and Bembe is not given to a non-existent animal. Of that you can be sure. During his expedition, Mackle established belief that Mokele and Bembe was a real animal and that it did indeed like the Milombo liana, as previous explorer Stein had stated. The descriptions he received throughout his expedition consistently pointed to a possible sauropod that preferred swampy areas. There was also a rumor that a Mokele and Bembe was killed at Lake Telly years ago. Mackle hoped to continue his exploration there, but was unable to due to difficulty in travel and expiring visas. There have been several reported Mokele and Bembe sightings in more recent years. In 2007, a tracker said that he had seen a Mokele and Bembe a few years ago on the Bumba River. He reported that it was something that heaved up with tremendous bubbling. I was frightened by the sight of this sudden apparition and left. A missionary claimed to have, been, claimed to have seen the creature on January 10, 2006 on the Republic of Congo side of the Sanga River. Three fishermen also reported seeing the creature just two days prior to the missionary. In 2007, an eyewitness said he observed a large brown animal with a long neck and small head in the eastern part of the Nagogo River for about two minutes at sundown, and a pair of fishermen claimed to have seen a huge body and head emerge from the water of the Boomba. A local of the Boomba River also claimed to have seen a Mokele and Bembe covered in greenery near his fishing camp on the Boomba River. It was said to make a goo 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 noise. What the hell is it, a baby? It the noise was described spelled G O U. Goo goo goo. Goo 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 goo. Go go go. Wah, wah. Anyway, a uh, Baca fisherman, Norbert Naga, watched a Mokele and Bembe emerge from a river in 2012 while he was in the company of several other villagers. Its back covered in algae emerged first, then its neck, then it threw its head toward a tree to feed on its fruit. We were very scared. All the fishermen are scared when they see it. So we ran away, but it paid no attention to us. New, exp new expeditions have been hampered by the unrest in the region. As I mentioned, there are some other creatures that are similar in description of the Mokele and Bembe. One in particular is the Emila Natuka. The Emila Natuka in Lingala language, also known as Aseka Moki, Najago Gunda, and Nagamba Name, Chepekwe or Irizima, is an elephant-sized cryptid that lives in the Congo and possibly Cameroon. It is feared by natives as the elephant killer and is ferocious and kills anything that it encounters. It is claimed to be around the size of an African bush elephant, which averages about 10.5 feet tall and 13,230 pounds. It's brownish gray in color, with a heavy tail, and with a body of similar shape and appearance to a rhinoceros, including one long horn on its snout. It has four short, stump-like legs and has no frills or ridges along the neck. The animal is alleged to be semi-aquatic and feed on malambo and other leafy plants. The Emila Natuka is claimed to utter a vocalization described as a snort, rumble, or growl. Not a goo-goo-goo, just in case you're wondering. The structure of its horn is debated among writers on the subject. The debate runs like this. If the horn is ivory, then it would be a tusk or tooth, and not a horn at all. Some rhinoceroses do have tusks, especially the Asiatic one-horned kinds, yet these are not known to inhabit Africa. If the horn is made of bone, then the creature is a reptile, 
as many fossil reptile groups, such as Ceratopsians, had horns made of bone. Finally, the horn could be made of keratin, as are the horns of African rhinos. However, this debate really is null and void because without a specimen to check out, everything is just complete speculation. The Amela, Amela Natuka was larger than a buffalo and dwelled throughout the Lukuala swamps. Amela Natuka kills elephants, buffaloes, or hippos when disturbed much like the Mokele and Bembe's allegedly renowned hatred for hippos. While both animals are supposedly herbivores, they are also known to be incredibly territorial. And for this reason, the pygmies claim to fear it more than any other dangerous animal. In about 1930, an Emila Natuka was supposedly killed near Dongu. It is often compared to a triceratops. So, what are some of the possibilities of what this creature could be? There's always the possibility that there's some kind of living fossil that has evolved from what we know of sauropods into something slightly smaller. Some people say that the African soft-shelled turtle is to blame and that people are misidentifying the turtle. These turtles have incredibly long necks and they're saying that people see them with their neck stretched out and they think that it's a dinosaur. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure people can tell the difference between a smaller turtle with a long neck and a giant sauropod, possibly a smaller version of an apatosaurus. I think I used to have a soft-shelled turtle. I don't remember if it was a soft-shelled turtle or a side neck turtle. Anyway, either way, they're similar in size and I'm pretty sure it was nowhere near the size described in the accounts. There are also suggestions that it's a case of misidentification, that people are seeing hippos. I don't really agree with this simply because I imagine those who survive in the area by fishing and hunting know what a hippo looks like and I personally have never heard of a hippo with a long neck or a long tail, so I'm not sure how that could be misidentified. I could be wrong. Some of the sightings could very well be a hippopotamus. Some of the canoe tippings, the killing of people, but a hippo has a giant massive head, not a small head, and they do not have a long neck. Some think that it could possibly be some kind of giant reptile, like a giant iguana or monitor lizard, but neither of these creatures as we know them fit the descriptions. And I realize that neither of these creatures are large enough, but we're saying possibly there is a species of very large lizards like these two that could have evolved into something. So we kind of know them, but it's new too, if you get what I'm saying. But the point is that monitor lizards do not have really long necks. They're not six feet long. And iguanas have a lot of um, like spikes along their spine. So they're not smooth. They do have other protrusions on their skin. All the other possibilities point to some kind of extinct creature or a creature that is still yet unknown. So whether it's a giant unknown iguana or, or a giant unknown monitor lizard, both of those would be considered cryptids. I don't know about you, but I would absolutely love a little Apatosaurus as a pet or a smaller Triceratops, except maybe for scooping the poop. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can get Lurk wherever you get your favorite podcast or at lurkpodcast.com, where you can also find links to our social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we also have a YouTube channel. If you enjoy what you hear, consider giving us a five-star review or simply share the podcast with your friends. 
Also as a reminder, the Whitehall New York Sasquatch Festival is coming up September 24th. That's a Saturday. Lurk will be there along with our friend Liz from So Sci-Fi and Beyond. She has a lot of really cool stuff. She has jewelry. I mean like Bigfoot necklaces really. All kinds of necklaces. Harry Potter. Harry Potter stuff. She's got some crocheted hats like a Yoda hat and um, I think there's an alien hat. So if you're in the area, definitely stop by, come out and say hi, buy yourself some merch. If you're not in the area and you're looking for something fun to do to take a road trip, I highly recommend it. The festival itself, there's no admission fee. There's all kinds of vendors and last year there was a beer garden and I'm pretty sure they're planning on that as well. There were also several different speakers. And until next time, keep lurking. They're coming to take me away. Ha ha, they're coming to take me away. Ho ho.